Hi guys, Mikey from Nana Clubhouse here. Hoping you're all keeping safe amidst this crazy pandemic lockdown. I figured you guys might like to have access to some tools to work on music whilst we're all keeping safe in our isolation bubbles. Today I'm going to show you how to bring sounds into Reaper, arrange the shape of your song and to do a basic mix. We're going to use Looperman to find sounds that work well together and bring them into Reaper. So Looperman is an awesome online library of musical phrases like loops and samples that you can access for free. One great thing about Looperman is that the content is all clear to be used in your commercial projects. That means you won't get sued or sent nasty letters if you release something commercially or professionally with these sounds. You will need an email address to register with Looperman before you can download content from them, but again, it's a free service. Uh, in a later video, I'll show you how to use um, plugins like synthesizers, samplers, and effects to create your own musical phrases and not use loops. Okay, let's get started. First off, Open your browser up and search for Looperman. I'm using Chrome, but you don't have to. Looperman. Um, and I'll just load it up. Okay, and it should look like this. If you already have an email address, you can... Oh, I'll just log out so I can show you. Uh, you can log in with this guy here. Um, sorry. Sorry, you can register with this guy here. Uh, and um, yeah, uh, it'll guide you through the process. You will need to have access to your email address um, so that you can um, activate it. Um, but if you don't have an email address, that's fine. You can just log in with the 9A uh, Clubhouse um, login, which I'm totally fine with you guys using. And that email address is 90.audio at hotmail.com um, and the password is chinai25 so that's c-h-a-e-n-a-e-25 all one word all lowercase um, but don't worry about remembering all of that stuff because i'll post that in the comments uh, up under the video um, so after we've entered all that information we'll tick these couple of boxes don't tick that if it's on a shared computer um, and then log in voila we're all good we're logged in and we're gonna head straight to loops and samples um, so in this section of looper man um, there are other sections but we're not going to focus on that um, you can search for loops um, by keyword by genre uh, tempo and key and um, it's these that last bit that's going to be really relevant for us uh, in the next couple of steps so um, yeah um, um, I'm going to start with a drum beat because that's my thing um, you can search for anything in really Looperman carries quite a few different styles uh, because I'm old school and you know I can do whatever I want you know I'm being creative here I'm going to search for boom bap because that's my thing so uh, I'll put that into my keyword search oh there we go cool <laughs> and um, now we just simply hit find loops and it'll do, it th do its thing uh, once we've got our results up we can have a listen to them, audition them, and see what we've got. So let's have a listen to that. Okay, that's pretty cool, but there's no beats in there, man. All right, and this one here, same deal. Very cool. Not what we're after, though. Uh, okay. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's that's strong. We like that. Damn, like that sub on the kick, man. The snare is really turning me off, though. Uh, moving on. Yeah, there we go. That's our guy right there. Right 
right there. Cool. Nice and grungy. A little bit of uh, fuzz on top and some vinyl hiss. So how we go about downloading this stuff is that we just click on download, obviously, and that'll take us to the individual sample um, page. So uh, from here, we just hit download and it goes, does its thing down on the left hand side. You can see that it's downloading. Before we move on, though, I want you to check out um, these tags at the bottom. These are really important. Um, so uh, that one tells us that the beat is at eight, 89 BPM, which is beats per minute. Um, and doesn't have a key because it's a drum beat, it doesn't need one. Um, but that key is going to become really super important in the next step. Um, so, yeah. Um, if you're following along with this tutorial and you've downloaded your own beat, um, I would expect that <laughs> the BPM is different because it's a different beat. So, yeah, don't worry if it's a different BPM, just the important thing is to remember what that number is and, uh, yeah, just keep it in mind if you need to write it down on a piece of paper. Uh, okay, the next step is just to, it's pretty easy, we're just going to open up Reaper and import our beat. So, I've got Reaper on my start bar down the bottom here, um, and um, so I'm just going to click that, but you might need to look for it over here. Um, under R, PQR, Reaper, or search for it in the search bar here, Reaper, yep, um, yeah, either, however you get there, get there, um, once it's open, I want you to go back to Chrome, and just drag your beat in to Reaper, whatever it is, just click it, and drag it into Reaper, uh, um, so you'll see that it's got the sort of grey box that it brings up um, and that sh tells you where it's going to place uh, the sample inside Reaper and I just want you to let it go at the hard left hand side of Reaper and um, it may ask you to adjust the media to the project tempo and there are you've got options there but um, just click OK and let it do its thing. Um, we're going to adjust that now anyway, um, because our beat was at uh, 89 BPM, we checked that out when we downloaded it, but um, by default Reaper always starts its projects at 120, so if we listen to what that sounds like, um, you can hear that Reaper's sped the beat up, and well, you know, which is cool if we're doing, you know, that's a, you know, that's a sound, that's cool. Um, but I think we're going to go for something a little bit more uh, chilled out and a little bit less frantic. So um, we're going to change the BPM by clicking on the BPM counter down the bottom here, right in the middle, and just typing in 89. So let's have a listen to what that does. Yeah, cool. That's more like what went. Oh, my God. Um, turn things down so we're not redlining. Cool. Sweet. So that's our beat in place and the tempo sorted. Um, I let's go. So let's go back to Looper Man and select the next part of the tune we're going to download. Um, put on top of it. Uh, so back one level and up your top. Cue. All right. So one really cool thing about Looper Man is that people upload. Um, type beats and type loops and um, you know so like they might be inspired by a particular artist um, so and they'll upload things in that style or they might even like you know um, do take sections from songs and that sort of thing so if you're wanting to do a remix you can often find parts in there that are from songs or that are in this at least in the style of a particular artist so uh, for instance you could say search uh, by keyword for someone like J. Cole for as of for instance and um, click on find loops and you'll find that there's a whole bunch of people have created uh, J. Cole style um, samples and loops so have a listen to these Ooh, damn 
that's nice. Okay, cool. You like that? What else we got? No. That's cool, but it's not the sort of thing I'm... Ooh, strong contender. I'm liking it. Yeah, all right. Could be a winner. Yeah, that's that's it for me. I think it's the, the bells and the vocal sample. So, yeah, I like that. So I'm just going to click on download like I did with the, uh, the boom bap beat and then download again and get that downloading. It takes two seconds to download. Uh, all right, so before we move on, uh, I want to point out that the tempo is much higher than our original uh, beat and this now has key information attached to it which is G sharp minor so I just want to keep that information in mind because it's going to become really relevant in the next couple of steps um, yes uh, so now that we've downloaded it we're just going to click it and drag it onto Reaper like we have done in the past and use that um, grey box to line it up with the left hand side okay Cool. Uh, right, because this second loop that we've dragged in is slightly, uh, well, it's a lot faster uh, than the other one, we've got an option of um, making it a little bit slower. No, wait. Oh, God, my brain's gone. Um <laughs> We can either go two ways. Uh, we can shorten it or lengthen it. Um, and I'm I'm seeing that it's almost half the length of our beat. So let's go that way. We'll um, make it smaller. And how you do that in Reaper is pretty easy. Um, so what I'll get you to do is mouse over the right hand edge of the loop that you've just downloaded. And you can sort of see that it turns into a bracket with an arrow. That's cool, but that's not the tool we're after. We're going to hit Alt on our keyboard and all of a sudden that tool uh, turns into a hand. Once it's the hand you can um, change, resize it and stretch stretch things out or compress things down So um, without changing the pitch which is pretty amazing. So we're going to resize it down to half the size of our beat and I'll just quickly copy that out so uh, that's sort of roughly the right, well it's exactly the same, same size as it and it will stay in sync. So let's have a listen to that and see if that's... Oh my god, that's amazing. That's actually not bad. Cool. Um, so that's all synced up perfectly um, and uh, we can move on to the next element. Um, so we'll download a couple more things and then we'll get into the mixing and arranging side of things so um go head back to Looperman and uh go back back to our searching come on internet you can do it you can do it there we go um all right but this time we're going to um, add a key definition to our search terms. Uh, we're going to do this so we'll only get stuff in our search results that sounds good with what we already have. We know that the last loop was in G sharp minor, uh, and that's what so that's what we'll select in this drop down menu, um, which is down right at down the bottom. It's the very last one, G sharp minor, uh, not G hashtag G sharp minor. Um, <laughs> so now now we've narrowed our search terms to only things in G sharp minor I'm going to have to widen our keyword search just otherwise we're only going to get like one thing and that might suck so um, I'm just going to click on our keyword search and change it to something really broad like say hip hop so there we go I've been here before um, and then click on find loops and see what we get Um, right, so we've got some stuff, but before we go on with that, I want to um, share a trick to help you out with the selection process. So I'll get you to go back to Reaper, and um, 
what I want you to do is we're going to learn how to loop up what we currently have and have it running in the background so that we can audition the new stuff against it and see if it goes together. Um, so we're not looking for a, a beat synced perfect match. What we're just we're kind of just going for vibe. Um, and um, once we get once we're sort of roughly in the right ballpark, then we can download it and and add, make it perfectly synced. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to drag out our loop um, our loop region. Um, a loop region um, and uh, enable the loop toggle um, by clicking on this thing down here by the record button. So with that on, it's just going to keep playing and playing and playing forever, um, and we can we can then go back to um, Looper Man and audition everything against it and see if it vibes, see if it's correct. You know, um, it, if it fights it, then it's going to be no good. So I'll I'll let that run. And then we head back to uh, loop man and have a look. Let's see what we've got. Okay, that one's uh, okay. That's obviously got drums in it, so we're not going to mess with that. Let's have a listen to broken guitar loop. Close to our original jump beat, yeah, and hit the download again. So now we've got that downloaded. I'm just gonna, as usual, left click on that and drag it into Reaper and drop it like usual on hard left underneath our previous sample. Whoa, okay, so immediately you can see something is a little bit different about this one. It's much longer. Um, so, um, what? yeah, that's obviously a phrase that's twice as long as the other um, phrases that we've downloaded. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a problem, <laughs> but not really. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste what we currently have out here. So we'll have something to uh, accurately sync up the whole thing to, if that makes sense. Um, it may not do, but I'll just show you what I mean and that might be, uh, <laughs> yeah, that might make more sense. So what I'm going to do is hold down right, uh, click on my mouse uh, and drag over it to select them. And once I've selected them, I'm going to hold down control, which is command, I believe, on the Mac. And left click and drag out. And that's how we copy stuff in Reaper. And now you can see we've got uh, a hard edge that's eight bars long. And um, we can accurately sync our eight bar phrase against that because previously we'd been dealing with uh, one four bar and one two bar phrase here. So we're going to... Um, do that by as we have done in the past by just going to the right hand edge of it uh, holding down alt making that little fist appear on the tool tip and pulling it in and now it should all be synced so let's have a listen to that One more part uh, that sounds good to us, and we'll move on to the mixing and the arranging side of things. Um, so, actually, I'll, what I'll do is I'll just quickly loop that up again. So, just click and drag up the top to get that loop region. So, and escape to escape it if you want to. Yep, there we go. So that's all looped up. And we'll head back to loop man, and um, we'll probably just grab the very next thing. Because it's probably going to sound cool anyway. Uh, what about this? Uh, yeah, alright, cool. Yeah, I can see that working. Alright, so we're just going to click download on that. Download again, and boom, there we go. So drag that 
Oh, okay. And uh, as before, what we're going to do is go to the right hand edge of it, uh, make that tooltip turn into uh, a wee fist, and I'll pull it out. So now everything's synced up hard on the left and the right, and uh, should sound amaze balls. So let's have a listen. Wow. So let's rename our parts before anything gets too messy. I know that one, um, yeah, otherwise I'm just going to get lost. So over here we I'm pretty we know that, that the first one was a drum beat. So um, what I'm going to do is double click on this text area here and that will allow us to rename it whatever we want it to be. So I'm going to call that drums. I uh, have no idea what the second one was, so I'm going to have to solo that to hear what it was. And to do that, um, that is to just, just hear that one thing, you click on the S on the track that it's on. So that's the track it's on, and I'll click on the S to solo it, and let's have a listen. Oh yeah, cool. There's our bells. So there's our, our bells on that track, so I'm just going to double click there and call it bells. Um, and we'll do the same thing on this one. Um, I don't know, I guess that's a synth pad, or what is it? Okay. Ambient cloud, Cirrus ambient cloud. Alright, cool. Let's call that ambient. Ambient, yes, ambient. And this one was our orchestra. Um, it's, we'll call it strings. Cool. And one thing that you don't have to do at all, but I like to do because I'm just like that, um, is that you can select them all by left clicking the track and going down, holding down shift and um, going down to the bottom and selecting all of the tracks and then right clicking and go track color, set to random colors. Oh, that looks pretty. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm sure you guys can see where this is going. You can keep adding stuff, keep adding stuff, keep adding stuff. Um, and, you know, basically into infinity. But uh, it's really good <laughs> and useful to know when to stop with the stuff. Um, you know, you can easily add too much stuff. And... Um, as the old saying goes, less is more. Um, besides, I think it's a little, it's about time to talk about um, some mixing and arranging ideas. Um, so let's do that now. There are kind of, there are two really main ways to do a basic mix in Reaper. Um, and one of those ways is to use the knobs um, over here next to the name of the track. Um, you can see that if I hover the, if I mouse over the knob, it'll give you a, a volume readout, and you can, if I play the track back, I can adjust that volume uh, you know, just by raising the knob or lowering it. And that's, you know, that's totally a valid way of mixing. Um, but for me, I find it a little bit crude, and I don't really like working that way. So, I tend to use uh, what's called the mix view, uh, the mixer view, um, and you can get at that by holding down control and pressing M, which is the quick key, uh, or if you're on a Mac, it's command and M, I believe. Um, otherwise, you can hit uh, view up the top here and just select the very first thing, um, and I'll bring up the mix view. So the mix view kind of looks like um, for those of you who are, have ever seen like a an old audio mixer, uh, you know, like an analog mixing desk from a recording studio, that's what it sort of kind of looks like. It's got faders on it and knobs and stuff. Um, and um, yeah, you just adjust those faders um, to adjust the level of that 
loop. I mean, it's it's kind of not rocket science, really. Um, however, mixing is a huge topic, and you know, it, you know, it's a real rabbit hole, and uh, we can. You know, there's people that devote their whole lives to it, so we're not going to go there. Um, so let me just say, at its most fundamental level, um, you're just going to change the levels of the different loops so that the whole thing sounds good to you. All right, so I'll have a quick go at that and try and make it sound as good as I can in 10 seconds. <laughs> Way more to mixing than just doing that, but um, for today we'll keep it at that and we'll move on. So now for arranging. Um, so most modern tunes work out to be about three and a half minutes long, but this is totally just a guideline, and you can do any length you like. Um, I'm going to copy and paste what we've got currently and fill out the whole three and a half minutes with just solid stuff so how I do that is um, I just right click and drag to create a selection um, lasso and then hold down control and copy the whole thing by left click and dragging so that's how we copy uh, yeah that's how we copy stuff in Reaper and I'm just going to keep doing that Every time it doubles up, it's like exponential, like COVID. Oh my God. Um, and until, all right, so what I'm trying to get to is three, three and a half minutes. So three and a half minutes is kind of over here somewhere. So it looks like I probably need to get another two or three of those things. Oops. Before I've got my three and a half minutes. Cool. Perfect. Yeah, man. All right. Uh, so you can see that we've basically got a solid block of musical material to work with now. Um, and up until this point, we have been doing things largely additively. That means that we've been adding stuff together to create something cooler than just its individual parts. Arranging a, a loop-based tune like this, however, is for me a subtractive process. Um, I cut things away so that the song swells and fades in intensity. Um, you know, without that, the track would just be boring, you know. Um, there would be no changes in the arrangement. There'd be nothing that got bigger or quieter, you know. It just, it just, it would suck. Um, so I like to use the analogy of carving, right? You start off with a solid block of wood or stone and you cut into it to reveal the form of what you're making. Um, so that's kind of the same idea with this. We've got this big block of stuff and we're just going to hack into it. Um, so I want to add a disclaimer to uh, what I'm about to say. There is no one way of arranging a tune that will always work. But, having said that, there is a basic pattern that will work in most cases. Um, knowing what that pattern is made up of will make things a little bit easier and clearer. We're pretty lucky that we're dealing with a hip-hop style track, because there aren't usually that many different parts to a tune in that style. Okay, typically you'll um, have an intro, a hook, verse, and an outro as different sections. Um, the intro and outro will usually book in the middle section of the song, which will be alternating between verses and hooks, or hooks and verses, depends on how the um, lyricist has written things. Um, your performers, if you're working with them, will give you guidance if they want a particular length of verse or hook. But usually you can get away with making verses uh, 16 bars and hooks 8 bars long a piece. Um, does that make sense? Um, yeah. So 
hopefully we'll, we'll do it and hopefully it will become clearer. Um, so let's get started on the intro um, and I'll just take us over to the left and zoom in. Oh, to get right to the left, you press home um, and I think that works on Mac as well. So, um, to, And we'll zoom in using the mouse wheel. Um, I like to find the longest loop of whatever we, we're using and that's definitely these bottom two. Um, I find that longest loop and I usually because that, that'll be a single phrase, a single musical phrase, and I like to make that the length of the intro. Um, so it's one long com completed phrase, and then the song kicks in. Um, I've already decided in my mind that I don't want any drums happening during the intro, so I'm just going to select them um, and press delete, get rid of them. Um, uh, and I've also decided that the strings are going to signify that the hook has arrived and um, I've decided also that the hook is going to be first. I mean that was pretty arbitrary um, so I'm going to get rid of the strings in the intro um, and yeah I mean like I could have I could have started off with a verse and then gone to a hook but I've you know it could, it's just completely arbitrary. I'm going with the hook first. Um, so, um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, let's. Oh, actually, yeah. Uh, one thing that I like to do uh, to add a little bit of excitement um, is to put a snare hit in before the beat drops. Um, into either the verse or the hit, uh, sorry, the hook. Um, and how you can do that is pretty easy. You just um, go to the left hand edge of your um, drum beat and hover, mouse over it, and you can see that it becomes like a bracket with like an arrow. Um, so if you left click that with your mouse and just drag it out, you'll see that um, it becomes. Yeah, it just literally drags out. Um, it's not um, shrinking or expanding or anything like that. What we would do with the um, alt, it's just it's just copying it out. So let's have a listen to that and see what it sounds like. It might take a few different tries to get it right. Oh uh, yeah, that sounds pretty cool. I think I might just make that snare a bit louder though. Uh, well, no. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna copy that out. Yeah, yeah. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. Copy that out and make that louder. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Cool. All right. So it's one of those tricks. It's an oldie and a goodie, and it's, you know, it almost always works. Um. Right. So. There are heaps of other things you can do with intros, um, like re-triggering samples and cutting up loops and chopping things and, um, you know, all sorts of cool stuff like throwing in like risers and downlifters and, you know, my God, the sky's the limit. But um, hopefully I'll get around to talking about some of those at some point. But um, for now, um, we'll leave the intro like that, eh? Um, it's basically just those two elements until the snare comes in. And, you know, and it's kind of cool because it gives the whoever your vocalist is to some time to introduce the song and kind of do their thing. And, uh, yeah, whatever. I don't know. Like, it's kind of a space that they can, you know, introduce themselves. Um, All right, so I've decided I want the hook to be immediately after the intro because the hook is t typically the most active, loudest, busiest part of the song. I'm going to leave all the parts in place and um, just measure out eight bars from the start of that, um, and that, that will be our hook. So um, there's a couple of different ways of doing that. Obviously, we know that 
those samples are eight bars long but the other way of doing it is actually uh, to click and drag our loop selection tool and if you look down at the bottom you can see uh, the loop sorry there's some numbers that are changing and um, those are bar numbers so I'll, I'll pull it out to eight bars long and um, yeah that's how you measure stuff in, in Reaper um, and uh, you know that, that's a kind of a handy way of um, doing stuff if you're like I want to quickly see if like that's 16 bars from there all right cool um, of course because we know that that sample is eight bars long we'll just go to there and say okay cool that's where the verse is going to be because the verse is basically twice as long as that we can take two of those out and there's our verse cool easy as that so uh, we decided that our form was basically going to be alternating um, hooks and verses so we can really just repeat that pattern you know we're going to have another hook here which is going to be eight bars long and then following that by two bars of verse so I'll delete that uh, then we've got another hook here that comes in and then another two bars of uh, sorry another two phrases uh, in the verse so we'll delete those and then suddenly we've got three hooks and three verses so that's basically all you need in a tune and that's a full tune there'll be a lot of work for a, a lyricist to come up with enough material to to make that uh, meaningful um, yeah it's like it's a decent length of length of time to be spitting bars um, yeah all right uh, we're getting pretty close to having our basic arrangement done so we need to create an outro and we're basically finished I th I like to think of outros as being mirror images of the intro so we can just copy it to the end um, you know that's kind of an easy way of, of doing it and like I said before when I was talking earlier about the uh, the intro it's it's kind of like there's a lot of other stuff that we to make this song pop you need to add like you know rises and up down lifters and um, you need to cut stuff up and retrigger samples and you know add stuff to it to and cut stuff out of it to make it sound cool but um, you know to use the analogy of carving we've, we've carved out all the big chunks now and we're gonna get the small chisels out now and um, start applying the fine detail this is just the big chisel work so um, yeah um, but that's that's the overall uh, shape of the of the arrangement and um, I think we could we've done enough to call it a day um, so we have covered quite a lot of stuff today but hopefully you've seen enough um, to feel confident to download some loops and have a go at your own projects and um, you know create some stuff while you're in lockdown you might as well there's heaps more to learn and heaps more to um, to look at in terms of like creating beats and uh, making music but um, you know hopefully this will get you guys started I'll be um, posting more stuff and uh, hopefully uh, you guys will get something out of it thanks for watching until the next video um, I do hope you guys stay safe and look after your families and uh, look after yourselves yeah cool all right bye guys